ready, so we're going to use this old leather jacket to begin making our mock pattern. I'm honestly just going to cut it up and dissect it so I can use these pieces and test out my pattern that I am going to draft later on. So as you can see, there's a hole in the arm. My brother was getting rid of it and I figured, you know what, I'm going to use this and make sure that my pattern is going to look great. And this leather is very similar to the size and the weight of the leather I'm going to making, be making the finished product out of. Uh, so I'm just going to use what I have on hand instead of buying brand new material to waste on this mock pattern. I'm just ripping out a lot of the seams and trying to get all the inner lining and the inner facing out of it because we don't need that stuff in the end. Um, so, quick update on my witcher outfit. I decided that I was going to do this pattern. I don't know if I'm going to do the straps on it, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it how I wanted to make it in the first place. So I just pulled off the pattern pieces for this top cowl part right here. And here are my pieces. So I just labeled them which one was left and which one is right. That way I don't have to make a bunch of pattern pieces. Right now I'm transferring them onto my drafting paper so I can have a seam allowance for the leather that I'm going to use. And I'm going to make like a brown version and just a mock leather version of what my armor would look like. I might run out of material, but that's okay. So I'm going to work on transferring these pieces and then try and get the uh, shoulder pads done today. And then I want to start looking at how I'm going to do the corset and then the crotch guard for it. And I know everybody's going to hate me for saying crotch guard, but I'm literally trying to make the Netflix version of The Witcher, but make it a girl, but make it better, and also make it in line with Witcher 3 games. So this is a huge project for me, and um, I'm really glad that I have a sewing dummy because if I tried to do this by hand, we'd be out of luck. So let's get on to the next phase. Alrighty, so this is what I'm doing with my pattern pieces today. I'm basically trying to trace them as close as possible to the actual cutout that I did on my dummy. And then I'm trying to give myself about a quarter inch of seam allowance just for the fabric, just to, just to be okay, you know, just be a little certain with it. And then, uh, for example, today I'm going to work on trying to get this neckline to work properly because <laughs> this neckline isn't the greatest. I don't know if I'm going to have these pieces with the edges just raw and all uneven or if I'm and then just frame them with um, a thin strip of fabric, leather fabric to make it all even like in this design or if I want to actually level them and then put the top on but we'll see what happens when I get to it um, and then hopefully I'll be able to start working on the shoulder pads right here today and see how big I need to make those and what else kind of material I want to use to make them but that is what I'm doing right now freshly showered feeling like a coward but still ready to tackle Rebecca Hello and welcome back. Like every responsible nerd, I have an entire folder of my pattern pieces for this cosplay. So um, just to give you a quick look through, these are all the cow pieces. Uh, I have them numbered and written, uh, or labeled, not written, labeled, uh, what means what. I guess I'm the only one who understands it, but we'll get to that later. I'll tape it down and I'll show you guys when we start making this. Um, I also have a shirt piece, a shirt pattern, not a shirt piece, a shirt pattern. Uh, I think I found this one at a thrift store, but it has a very nice um, cowl collar and then the cuffs on the sleeves are excellent. So we're going to use that for our shirt for this costume. And then these are, this is my crotch guard, this is my lower shoulder pad, my upper shoulder pad, and then currently I'm working, oh, I don't know where that came out of, but we'll find out later. But today we're just going to focus on this cow piece because I feel like that's the most challenging aspect of this pattern, uh, is getting this cow piece correct. So uh, yeah, if you like to make cosplays, I suggest you do this folder system and just keep it all together because it makes way more sense. I have so many patterns, I'm not going to remember which pattern <clears throat> I chose for everything. So I would recommend just putting it in a folder.
So this is what my pattern looks like so far and obviously it looks a little wonky because the outer circle is bigger than the inner circle and I know idealistically the inner circle should line up but this is how it's going to look. I'm going to attach this cowl at the back with buckles but all my pattern pieces are cut out so I'm going to start pinning these pieces together and I'm probably going to use um, some chalk to label the pieces just in case I get confused and um, actually no instead of pinning them together we're gonna pin them together and then we're gonna pin them on my dummy and see how this works okay so I've made a mistake so I have a front shoulder right and a back shoulder right but I only have a back shoulder left and not a front shoulder left so I need to go draft a pattern and cut another piece because I'm actually missing a piece and this is why you make mock versions first so you can realize how stupid you are so you don't mess up on nice expensive material anyways I'll be right back with another pattern piece <laughs> just joking it was hiding in my scrap pile <laughs> okay back to pinning Alrighty, after cutting everything out and pinning it and having a couple mistakes, this is what it looks like pinned on the dress form. It doesn't look like much because it's just pinned right now, but it fits perfectly around the neck. And here is a back view of it. Please excuse my plants. Sorry, let me turn them. So it's going to be fixed in the back with buckles and then I'm going to sew this up and we'll see how it fits. I like where it sits with the neckline. I think I can leave the neckline like it is. I don't need to alter the pattern, but I do need to make a strip of fabric to make a collar. Um, I'm still debating if I want to do the back, just make one back piece all together and then tack that to the front and then do two finishing strips or if I want to take the back piece and fold it over top and do it like that. I think I might do that with the leather just because it saves me on material and it saves me a little bit of sewing time. So um, we'll see how this goes. So yeah, that was uh, my project for today. I'm going to take a break and I'll be back and show you what it looks like when it's all sewn up. Okay, so I pinned this on myself after pinning it on my sewing machine my sewing dummy because I just wanted to make sure about the fit. I pinned it to myself inside out and honestly I'm really loving the vibe and the feel. The neck is a little high. I'll give it that and I don't know if I want to add boning to this or not but I do like the look. Everything sits correctly where it should and I figure once I sew it properly, I think that these will stiffen up once I press the seams on them too. And it'll actually give that flare like I want it to. Because essentially what I've done is I've made, uh, this is basically like a skirt pattern that you would do if you were making a skirt with pleats. You would make your top pieces narrow and your bottom pieces wider so it flares. And honestly, I'm very, very happy that... This turned out so well, especially for a mock-up and especially for like sewing with leather, which is very difficult. Um, so I'm going to get this stitched up and put the edges on it and we'll see how it looks. And I'll probably put some basic buckles on it. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Bye. Okay, so I haven't filmed in a couple of days, but I got a lot done and I also got a lot of my supplies done. Or supplies in, as you can see. I got the bling now. Ooh. Um, so let me show you my mock pattern after I sewed it on my machine. This is how it came out and I like it. It fits fine. It works perfectly. The only thing I didn't really like was I had too much uh, seam allowance on the edges. So I trimmed those down after I sewed them. Uh, a fourth inch was just too much but I just wanted to be on the safe side just in case you know like I didn't sew it properly. But otherwise all the panels are the correct sizing. Um, everything is done correctly. The reason why I trimmed that fourth inch off the excess is because the excess was making my, uh, my pattern look weird. And I couldn't turn and sew down the excess because it was too small and I couldn't press the seams open because it's fake leather and I was just ending up like melting and making the fake leather weaker. So. Um, I just trimmed it and it, it works fine. Um, and I'm going to show you on the piece that I did off screen uh, how I'm going to fix this kind of like rivet or I guess domed look. 
um, so it will lay more flat once I put the backing on. So as I said, I got in all my supplies over the last couple of days. This is the final piece and <laughs> I'm so happy with it. It's, it's so beautiful. Um, the only thing is, is as I was making this, I was looking at my reference photos and I realized that there's also black rivets in the armor, but I'm honestly not that mad. This looks great. And you know what, if the sun hits me, or light hits me, I'm just gonna look like a beautiful witchy disco ball, a witcher disco ball. And um, yeah, that's not bad. I'm using domed rivets cause I thought I wanted to add a little more texture to the piece than just like the basic flat rivets that you would put. I did buy some of those, but I think I'm going to use those for my bodice piece instead. And I'm going to use uh, dome rivets for all my external armor because I think it just makes it look a little more interesting with the texture. I did use an entire package on this piece alone, so I'm going to have to buy... I did buy more, so those are coming in soon. But for now, I'm just working on this cowl piece. And I'm hand stitching the leather back to it just because I don't really trust myself with my machine to do the edges and finish them correctly like this. So I'm going to do it by hand and nothing wrong with that. So this back needs to be attached. Um, it's honestly stiff enough as it is. I know I said I was gonna consider boning, but I think with the backing, it doesn't need anything. And there's no interface or anything in between it. It's just two pieces of leather sandwiched together. Um, but once the back is attached, I'm going to go in and hand stitch these sides in like a, um, a bodice pattern, so like the X's, because uh, if you look at the Netflix costume, it is it looks more like hand stitched and not necessarily mach machine stitched like this does. But I'm also going to use that fact to help attach the back and so it doesn't do this which you don't necessarily want in a costume piece. So that's how I'm going to do that, and that will probably stiffen it up even more. Um, this is pretty much done. It just needs the back attached, and then I'm going to add some buckle pieces onto it. So I'm going to hand this off to Aubrey, who will be finishing it, and I'll see you guys later. Toss a coin to your witcher, oh valley of plenty. <laughs> Hi guys, um, I'm back. Uh, as you can see, the cowl piece is finished. And I just gotta say, for um, having no pattern, I think I did a smashing job. Granted, it's pretty easy, but I've never made like neck pieces before, so I think that was the most difficult thing for me to do is getting that neck piece. Uh, what I did is I did the detail stitching on it and it looks really great. I think it looks really awesome. Um, it kind of makes the actual pattern pieces mold to my neck properly and it gives it that structure that I was looking for. Um, so I didn't really need any boning and I don't think I'm gonna put any boning in any of my other armor too because I think once I do my shoulder pieces, it'll be totally fine. As you can see, I added the buckles on, and the buckles, I kind of am not super happy with the buckles, because I wanted this piece to be a little more like tight, but I'm honestly not really mad, because it, you know, it doesn't do anything weird. I hated how it was bulging in the back, but it honestly didn't do that after I just stitched it down. So um, I'm really happy that that technique worked out and it makes it both structurally better and 
detail wise better um i've never made buckles before either that was really strange to do i kind of just winged it i didn't really follow any tutorials um but yeah that's what I did, um, this took like a month of doing everything in my free time, and honestly, I can say with 100% certainty, my fingers are made of steel now. Um, I was using a thimble, but... <sighs> Me blowing on the mic. I was using a thimble, but I, like, kept poking myself because to do the edges it was like four layers of fabric that I leather fabric that I had to sew through and then the buckles it was like six I honestly did not sew these buckles on I just attached them with this rivet piece and they kind of like move but honestly it's way better than trying to hand stitch them on so they just have rivet pieces attached to them and yeah uh, finishing this though has made me super motivated to do the rest because when I was doing it, I was kind of like, oh Jesus, this is going to take ages. And it is going to take ages, but I think the result is going to look absolutely smashing. Super excited for it. Um, I am still waiting for my call from Netflix for them to give me a costume design position. Um, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I guess I'll just make my own costumes, you know, in my house alone with nobody to praise me. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, I'm still waiting on my colored contacts for this costume, which I'm kind of disappointed about. Um, but they'll get here eventually, it just might be later. I definitely bought way too much fake leather, so I'm probably gonna make like a backpack. And then I got this like piece of fake fabric, like white fur fabric, that I was gonna use as kind of like, um, I guess like it you know because he's got like the fox the fox that Siri's wearing yeah so I was gonna turn it into like a vest and I thought that would be cool and um, yeah I think the most difficult thing now is going to be getting the crotch guard made correctly because that's like really difficult and getting the shin guards done correctly and then the pants because the pants pattern that I chose has a lot of pieces and I, I I think I don't do I think if I'm not hand sewing I don't take my time and I think that's a problem because if I'm machine sewing I'm like dragging it through the machine like come on we got to get this done we're on a deadline sis and you know things just don't come out when I don't take my time so I think what I'm going to do because this is such an intense cosplay I'm going to allow myself to do things each month both to give me a project that will last throughout the year so I what did I just say I think I'm going to give myself and allow myself more time to do a project that will last throughout the year and by doing that and doing kind of like an item each month type of thing I feel like I'm going to not feel as rushed and I'm going to actually take my time so the finished result will actually look halfway decent um, if not halfway decent absolutely brilliant and I just gotta say whoever does if you do professional costuming um, I, I need to have a talk with you because I don't know if my level of extra is necessary, but I really love my level of extra. I decided to do this cosplay. I, I was like, there's like extravagant cosplays, you know? But like a step up from extravagant is lavish. I'm going for lavish with this cosplay. I'm going all out. I am fully invested. <laughs> so um, yeah. Um, just wearing this though for like five minutes, I kind of feel gross and hot, so yeah, and you know what, even if I like, you know, only wear this once a year, I am going to find excuses to wear this armor. Brave? I'm there. Disney princess party? I'm there. Birthday party or something? I'm there. The Witcher could be a princess. 
I'm just saying. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so I'm really excited to get the rest of this costume done. And I will see you guys in the next video with um, more armor pieces. I think I'm going to save my pants for last because that's going to be a pain. Um, and then as far as my bodice goes, I think I'm going to have to add boning to it just because I don't think just basic stitching like this is really going to translate well in a bodice and corset piece. So I'm going to have to go get some boning, which is going to suck because I... I hate making boning channels and corsets. Uh, yeah. So anyways, see you guys in the next video. And uh, toss a coin to your witcher because Lord knows the pain I feel.